Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pleasant good morning to each and every one of you here. And we greet you all in the wonderful name, in the beautiful name, in the powerful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. Will you all stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As I open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning, O God. We give you praise, O God, for this wonderful day which you have given us, O God. We thank you for the gift of life, O God. You have wake, woken us up this morning, Jesus, and we give you thanks for it, O God. We give you thanks that we could come into your presence this morning, O God, where we can feel the fullness of your joy in this place this morning, Jesus. We pray, O God, for your presence, O God, to fill this place, Jesus. You have your way, O oh God, in this service, O oh God. And everyone, O oh God, that will come through those doors, O oh God, I pray they will come, Father God. Those who would come, Father God, wanting, O oh God, I pray that they would go receiving Jesus. Those who would come sick, Father God, I pray that they will go heal Jesus. Those who will come with their problems and their situations, O oh God. Father God, I pray, O oh God, that they will go in comfort this morning, Jesus. I give you thanks and I give you praise, oh God. I pray for the worshipers this morning, oh God, that you're going to bless them, oh God. You fill their voices this morning, oh God, and the person who has to come this morning, oh God, to deliver your word, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you go before him, oh God, Jesus, and you just have your way, Lord. You take control, oh God, of every single thing on this program this morning, Jesus, and you just reign this morning and take control, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, God. We give you praise, oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, I just want to hand over to the worship team, and they're going to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. this place. set free amen oh we bless your name Jesus amen even as we put our hands together for the Lord this morning we just want to thank him for his goodness unto us Jesus alas and in my sin
just want you to go around and shake somebody hand and tell them you're happy to see them in church this morning.
your seats this morning. Thank you, Jesus. This morning I just want to read a portion of scripture taken from John chapter 3 and read in verses 16 and 17. John chapter 3 and read in verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, this morning is Communion Sunday. And it, it just serves as a reminder of the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ had to make for us. You know, God had to send his only begotten Son. Imagine if we had to do that today, would we be able to do something like that? So this scripture this morning just serves as a reminder of the sacrifice that the Lord had to make for us. Amen? Yes. This morning I hand over to our pastor and he will do our announcement. And then... Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a big clap this morning. <laughs> Amen? Praise the Lord. So, we'll be back here again Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, and Friday evening, 7 o'clock. Remember, I'm doing a series of teaching in terms of... Um, preparing uh, you know your exhortation your sermons um, we have had a month or maybe about two months of different people sharing but we want to just brush up and tighten up some areas um, I've observed certain things and you all have great potential but we uh, we have never all reached a perfection as yet even me so that we all need, you know, a little guidance. So I encourage you to come out on uh, Wednesdays and Fridays as I do a series of teaching. I started Friday evening, amen, and introduce the topic. And I'm continuing Wednesday and Friday again. Okay, today's communion, I'll be going to stop at the table of the Lord. So let's prepare our heart. Those of you that are viewing online, you could have your sacrament ready to join with us in Holy Communion this morning. Also very important uh, announcement, um, on the 26th of this month, Sunday the 26th, we'll be having our special Indian Arrival service. So you are free to dress in your East Indian outfit, right? We're giving you enough notice, some of you might need to go and source it, get it, whatever. But we always have a great time in the house of the Lord as we join with the rest of the national community in celebrating Indian arrival. You know we also do it for for the um, emancipation and so on. Alright? So we're going to have a, a wonderful time in the house of the Lord. Um, also important announcement. Um, every year we do a project in and around the church. And I've told you we have an important project to do this year and starting from tomorrow. And uh, throughout the week, you will see activities on the outside. We are casting the, um, the car park, the concrete. The best advice, we were looking at two scenarios, whether we should do it with, with asphalt or concrete. And the best engineering advice is that we do concrete because the amount of water that passes through the area. And um, so the advice is that the asphalt after a while would get soggy and lift off the surface and you waste money. But the concrete will have a lasting effect. So when you come to service Wednesday or Friday, you should see some caution tape. Please don't park in that area. It would have steel and all of that in the place. All right? And uh, be very cautious. And don't just naturally driving there. Um, I've asked that the place be cautioned off so that nobody would have their vehicles damaged. But in a very short space of time, after it is dried and so on, you will be able to park much more comfortably in the area. Alright? We always ask you to give towards these projects 
and we actually show you what is being done. So your money is being spent, right, in the house of the Lord, in and around, for your own comfort. Amen? So you're actually here and you're seeing what is being done. All right, so please cooperate with us. Don't drive up in the area. Don't get your, your tires punctured. All right, don't get your vehicle damaged. Just for a short while, you'll be parking on the outside. We'll ask the ushers to help. Joshan, Brother Hansrad, you all will help to make sure people get good park, no double parking and so on on the roadway so that there will be free movement of traffic. Okay? Another very important announcement. Last night I had a very strange dream. And you see what is happening with churches and so on. And in that dream I was visited by someone who seemed to be a trickster. Pretending to be the, the one to come to church. But the Lord quickly showed me that it could be a, a trick. To hold up, to rub, to whatever. And I say I need to mention it to you. There are some of you who, are, who have military training here. I want you to be on your alert. And don't just take everything for granted. Always maybe take a little walk on the outside and see who is looking around. Who is waiting. And so, so be alert. Yes, we have cameras on the outside there. But the human factor is very, very important. Sometimes you might see somebody come and sit down in the church. Right? It's important that you with military training position yourself so you could see what is happening. You don't want your loved one to be held up. You don't want any members of the church, you know, to be assaulted and robbed because that is what is going on right now. Sometimes you see people coming in with weapon in church and want to stab this one and stab that one. You see it on social media. So I want those of you with military training start positioning yourself in such a way. Walk around. You are trained better than most of us here. And um, be mindful that this is the time we're living in and the environment that we are in. And do your part. God has placed you here. Not only for spiritual reasons, but reasons like that to help give some degree of protection. Alright, so I'm making appeal to those of you. Be mindful, look and see. And in fact, when church is finished, those of you with military training should be this, the first one on the outside to observe what is going on. Because ladies coming out, children coming out, you don't want anybody to be exposed to harassment outside. I, I, so. I got that dream last night and I say I need to make it known we have thank God we have we have not had these sort of things happening here but it does not mean that will it may not happen so please do that I ask in those of you with military training you should be the first one on the outside making observations standing up in a place and watching to see if there are strangers looking around and give some degree of protection. Alright? Praise the name of the Lord. So those are all the announcements. And um, at this time, remember we have communion today. So we're coming early with the message. So put your hands together. This is Patsy as she comes to share the word of God. This in Jesus name. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen. Oh, you're waiting for service to over just to go down on the beach. And Granny, how you laughing so? <laughs> Alright, so if you have to stay, stay an next three hours, so you might be late to go down on the beach. Alright? Praise the Lord. I just Amen. So, as Pastor was saying, yes, we need to be alert. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, you know, we thank God for the privilege and the opportunity one more time to share the word of God. Amen. Okay, and next week will be Mother's Day, so we have a special 
service, the men will be doing the service. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so the ladies, you all can pray for the men. All right? Wife, pray for your husband. All right? Praise the Lord. So we can go this morning one more time that we can share the unadulterated word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So as we look around in our country, amen, those of you who are not happy what is taking place in our country, What we need to do is to pray. And it's the same thing in the church. We do not like what is going on in the church. We need to pray. Amen. We need to pray. And this happened all over. Not only in Trinidad, but across the border. Amen. There are so many things, strange things, taking place in the churches that is not line up with the word of God. Amen. There are so many strange doctrines. You will see pastors preaching so many different things. And as we will always say, if you don't know the word of God, you will fall for it. Amen. You will fall for it. That's why we encourage you to walk with the Bible. Read your Bible. Amen. Anybody do not have a Bible? Raise your hand. You don't have one in the house, neither? Okay, so Sabina do not have a Bible. All right? Anybody have an extra Bible? You can pass it on to Sabina. Okay, anybody have an extra Bible home with dust on it? So you can pass it on to Sabina. Okay, the word of God is very important for our life. It tells us everything about our life. Amen? So it is time for the church now to come back to God. You know, we have fallen away from God. Yes, we come, we sit and we warm. We, we, we bench that we have. But gradually, some of us has been falling away. Amen. So it's time to come back to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there's a little song. It says, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord. Amen. So we need to stand in. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this morning... What I want to talk about is a message that you usually don't hear. You hardly hear it preach in churches now. And it is repentance. We hear all the nice sermons how to receive your blessing, how to get healed, that God is a loving God. God is merciful. And all the nice things. And bring $1,000, you will get your prayer answer. You know what the Bible said? Matthew 6, 53. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you seek God, when you put God first, everything will be added on to you. Right? So I say we hear all the nice message. But yeah, we need to come back to that place of repentance. Amen? From the pulpit to the pew. We need to come back to that place. And that is something now you hardly hear it. To repent from your sin. We might say yes. You could sin and come and God will understand. And God will bless and God will forgive. But if you do not repent. 
they will say, yes, I could go and do it over again. And God is loving and God is nice. And I could do it over again. But one day we will have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and answer to him. Amen? So my message this morning is about repentance. As I say in the church, we hear all the nice preaching. We feel good, we go home. We sin, we come back, we feel good, we go home again. And we do not have no regret for what we do. Amen? Repentance. Amen? So I'd like Nisha to read for me Matthew chapter 12, Luke, sorry, 24, verse 44 to 47. Luke 24, 44 to 47. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. So we see here, the Hebrew word for repentance is turn. Some people say to feel sorry, but you can feel sorry, as I say, for your sin, then you can go back and do it again and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Then you can come and you can do it again and say, I am sorry. But here it is saying, repentance in the Hebrew is to turn. When you turn, you have no desire to go back again. Amen? When one repents from his or her sinful ways, we have no desire to go back again. Because you know why? We go in God's way now. Right? We go in God's way now. And that is where 2 Corinthians 5, 17. When you turn, that is why the Bible says, all things are passed away, all things become new. Right? Because it's something new. You don't want to go back in that old thing again. So we turn away from that other than saying sorry. Because how many people come and you say, Lord, I'm sorry. And you go back outside there. Something happened, you come again, you say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Then next two years again, you go back again and you come back. So which means you're playing with God. But when you turn, you do not go back again. So repentance in the Hebrew is turn. All right? So we see here how salvation or repentance is vital for salvation. Sometimes we come, we say a little prayer here, and we say we accept Jesus as the Savior. But is it true? Because you're not seeing that turn around. Right? We just come, we say a prayer, we go back, and we go back the same way. You're not seeing any turn around in our life. Amen? And it is also growth for holiness. Because when you turn away, you don't want to go back. You come like a pig. When you, when you better pick them going back. But we don't want to be like that. We want to live that life to please God. So we see repentance is vital for salvation and growth in holiness. Right? So we see before Jesus was ascended to heaven, he commanded his disciples saying, preach repentance. Amen? And we need to come back to that place where we will preach repentance that people will live holy lives. Sometimes these are words 
Sometimes like you just come here and go out here. Sometimes like we're still in the church and we don't understand what is sin. We don't understand what is holiness. We don't understand what is righteousness. And we just go we merry way. Sometimes we go we merry way. And we can just go down that way. Amen. So repentance is vital for salvation. That's the first step. We repent. We turn from our sin. Amen. To get salvation. So Jesus commissioned his disciples to go and preach repentance. And today is no different. The message remained the same. The message remained the same. But sometimes in the church, we don't want to preach it. Because we might study, we might hurt somebody. Somebody might leave the church. They're paying their tithes, they might leave the church. But it's better you preach it. And if one soul gets saved and get to heaven. Amen. So we need to preach it. Amen. We need to let people know the truth. Amen. And we always quote the scripture. The truth shall set you free. But you know sometimes the truth really don't set me free. Because sometimes we are like the truth. Amen. So, as I said, the message remains the same. Amen. And I want to quote from a theologian here, Abraham Joshua. He said, a change in man's conduct bring about change in God's judgment. A change in man's conduct bring about a change in God's judgment. So you see, when we change, and if God has to pour down his judgment upon us, God himself will change from that and we will see later on amen so so repentance is necessary to preach in the church we need to bring it back amen hallelujah because if we do not preach about repentance the importance of repentance from your sin what will happen to the younger one that is coming up they will not know what it is to repent from their sin. Amen. So we need to preach and to teach back in the church repentance. Amen. Because I said the young one will not see it necessary to repent. They will just want to live an anyhow life and come and say yes. God will understand. God is love. No. Amen. So we need to preach it. Amen. So they will know how it is important that we could turn from our sin and live a right life. Amen. Because we all want to make it to heaven. We all want to make it to heaven. So we need to live a right life. And sometimes we might preach it for years upon years to preach a life, a, a live a right life. Sometimes we really do not understand. Sometimes you have to go in, in simple details. Sometimes you have to sit down and talk to somebody. The meaning of some of these things because we preach it for so long. And still, we still see in the same result. Amen. Righteousness, holiness, turn from the sin and all these things. And still, it happened. Amen? So we need to repent. Amen? So I want to read Matthew chapter 3, Nisha, verse 1 to 3. As I said, the message remained the same. God's words never change. Amen? In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. 
Amen. So prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. So we got to make our path straight. Amen. As I said, the message remains the same. Amen. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John was preparing the way for God. For Jesus. Sorry. He was preparing that way. He said, one is coming, greater one than me is coming. Amen. Whose shoes I am not worthy to lose. And that greater one was Jesus. In Matthew 4 17, Jesus came there on the scene. He said, Prepare, say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I said, The message remained the same. God's word never change. Amen. The Bible said not one jot or tittle of his word should ever pass away. Amen. So we need to go back to that place where we could come and say, Lord, I repent of my sin. Make that turn around. Amen. And all of us need to do that. We need to come back to that place. Amen. And make that turn around in our life. And say, Lord, I repent. I repent. Amen. We need to get on our knees back and repent. Amen. As I said, when you see the situation in the country, we need to stand there in the gap. Amen. We need to stand there in the gap. Amen. For our land, for our country, for our church, for our home, for our neighbor, for our family. We need to be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. I want to read Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Hear what you say here. Mark chapter 1, 14 and 15. He said, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The gospel, the word of God. Amen. Re believe what God says in his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sonisha, can you read Acts 2.38, you know, as Esther will come to the keyboard. Amen. As we just sing a little song just after the scripture here. Right. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Again here. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin. Amen. But first of all, we need to repent and ask God to forgive us. Turn around our life from our sin. And this is why 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, T-H-E-N, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So shall we all stand this morning on our feet as we sing this song. If my people, which are called by my name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If my people.
Jesus. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, this is what God requires for us. Amen. Hallelujah. To turn. Make that turn. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see how repentance is necessary. Yes, yeah? So we just a little writing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as we continue here. Amen. First John 1 verse 9. He said, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. So we see here, do not be deceived. No matter what the people say, repentance is still necessary to be saved. Holiness is still required to get into heaven. Amen. So repentance is still necessary to be saved. Amen. Repentance and holiness. Amen. God's required. Amen. So as we continue here. So the Bible said, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us. You know, sometimes we as Pentecostal people, sometimes we don't like to confess our sin. We prefer to hide it. But you know, in the, in the Catholic, Catholic, they do that when they go to church. The priests have a little place we sit there. Yeah, they have the confession. I know about that. They have the little place there. And whatever sin they do for the week, they will go and confess it to the priest. But here the priest cannot forgive sin. It's Jesus. It's Jesus to forgive sin. But I'm showing you something that we could learn. You know, they go and they confess to a man. But we sin and we don't want to go and confess to God, the one who is able to forgive us. We hide it. But this is why the Bible said here, in 1 John 1 verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. You know, if I was sin and I go, go, go to confess the pastor, he can say, all right, girl, you know, I forgive you. You know, and it's a mistake you do and all kind of thing. But then again, I could go back and do it again and tell him it's a mistake, you know, boy. It's a mistake. You know, that is man. But when you go to God, it's so different. Amen. He take it and he throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. But I do it again and I go back to pastor. He said, but girl, you, you just come and tell me. So you're gone and you do it again. What kind of thing is that? I don't know what happened there. What kind of thing will happen there? He said, girl, yes, I agree. Well, you're going and you do the thing again. Amen. So with man, it is so different. But with God, amen, he forget. Put it into the sea of forgetfulness. But that don't mean you have to go and do it again. And come back and go and do it again. No. Do that turn around. Forget about it and do not go back into it. Revelation 2 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first work, so else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Amen. This was to the church of Ephesus. Everything was so nice with them. And God, but then they fall away and committed sin. And God said here, remember from where you have fallen and repent. But so sad they did not repent. So God had was to remove from that church. God's presence was nowhere to be found because they repented not. Amen. So God's presence was not with them. So we're going to look at some example here 
of people that repented from the Bible. Amen. Second Samuel 11 verse 1 to 15. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time of the kings that the kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah and Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah and Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. And Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark, and Israel, and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab, and the servants of my lord, I encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink, and to lie with my wife? As thou livest, and as thou so livest, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. And he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord. But went not, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the front foot of the bat hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Amen. So we all know the story about David here, where David sinned and committed murder. Amen. So this was, this is an example of, of a person that repented. Amen. We see that David commit a terrible sin. Amen. He commit adultery and then murder. Adultery with Uriah's wife Bathsheba. And then he sent him to war. He went put him in front so that he can get his death. Amen. So you know sometimes Man just have plan. And today's world, it is be the same thing, eh? Sometimes you read story about these things. They had a plan. Yeah, so we see here. David wrote a letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the battle that he may be smitten and die. So we see a plan here, cover a plan. And sometimes, People have cover up plans. Amen? Praise the Lord. So it wasn't until Nathan the prophet confronted David. Nathan went to David and said, boy, so and so and so. 
And he confronted him and tell him what he has done. Amen? And then David really realized the sin that he was committed. Because he thinks was everything was nice. Yes, I see a nice lady there. So I could go and be with she, a man wife. You know, and he think everything was nice. Amen. But he didn't realize the sin that he has committed. Only when Nathan, the prophet of God, went and confront him. Then he realized the sin he has committed. Amen. So sometimes we sin. And sometimes we really do not. We think it slightly. And it's only sometimes when somebody comes to you and tells you, then you realize, you know, this is really, really a bad sin I do. Because sometimes we do it now and we just go down with merry way. You know? But only when somebody confronts you with it, then you will realize, just as Nathan did here to David, he confronted him. And sometimes in the church we need to do that too. Yeah, sometimes we sin and we marry, we're nice, we're smooth, smooth, going down the way to hell. But sometimes we need to confront people and let them know. We need to repent. Come back to that place. Live that life to please God. Amen. Because sometimes in the church is so many things taking place. And sometimes the pastor them doesn't want to correct because they're afraid if I go and correct, they go vex, they go leave the church, they go go, what they will say. Study what would Jesus do? And the first thing you should be thinking about, what would Jesus do? I say yes, we just preach a message. Jesus is loving and nice and forgiving, but he's also a God of wrath. Amen. So we need to go back to that place and repent. And repentance is necessary today for the church. Because the church itself is in a mess. There's so much, uh, as they say, ism and schism in the body of Christ. So much. Amen? Yeah. We talk about living holy, living righteous. We sing all the nice songs. But still, we're going down that road. Amen? Second Samuel 12, 13. I want to read a verse here. It's Second Samuel 12, verse 13. You say, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Amen. So when you repent of your sin, God will put it away. Amen. Because you know, you could imagine how David probably feel when Nathan went and confronted him. That what he has committed, you don't know. How we probably feel deep down inside I am. And this is why. Psalm 51, verse 3 and 4. Misha, you can find that and read it. So because David repented, God saved his life. Amen. 3 and 4. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Amen. So here David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgression. He said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from thy sin. Amen. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before thee. Could we as a people 
or as a church could say that, come and say that to God. No, I say something, we hide it. We hide it. And this is where, and as Esther come back, this is where David said in the psalm, he said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. And this is a prayer sometimes we need to pray. Amen. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Because David knew where he had fallen short. Amen. So shall we all stand as we sing this little chorus. Amen. Create in me a clean heart. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Create in me a clean heart, oh Lord. And renew. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me. This was a prayer of David. And when I look today, we can sing these verses. Create in me a clean heart. Amen. So you know when David sinned, you maybe couldn't imagine how he felt. That he went to God. And he wrote this psalm from the depths of his heart. Saying, Lord, cast me not away. From thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. And David, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart. Amen. Because he repented. 
So when we repented from our sin, we could be after God's own heart too. Amen. God will say, yes, this is sister so-and-so, a woman after my heart, or brother so-and-so, a man after my own heart. Amen. So we see here, even though David committed adultery and sin, he repented and God forgive him. And you know that child he had with Bathsheba, that child died. Amen. That child died. Yes. Amen. So God does know what he's doing to bring people to their senses. Amen. So things just have to happen to us for we to come to say, Lord, I repent. Forgive me. And God will do it. Amen. What about we have the account of Zacchaeus in Luke 19, 8, 9, and 10? Could you read that, Nisha? And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So we all know the account of Zacchaeus who was a tax collector and he used to rob people. Amen. But one day he heard Jesus was passing through. And he wanted to see who is this Jesus. So while on his way, he saw the sycamore tree. And being little in stature, he ran up that tree to see Jesus. Amen. But while Jesus was passing, Jesus looked up. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. Zacchaeus probably said, but how this man know my name? Who tell this man my name? So Jesus know our name and Jesus know all what we just be doing. Yes, nothing is in secret. Nothing. We could hide from man, but not from God. Amen. So Zacchaeus on that tree, Jesus passing, he look up. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. I am going today at your home. And Zacchaeus made haste and came down that sycamore tree. And Jesus went to his home. And I believe without Jesus saying anything, he sat to talk because he was guilty. He was guilty of what he was doing. And sometimes... In our life, we need to feel guilty and confess to Jesus what we have been doing. Amen. Don't just keep it. Confess. You say, if you confess, he is faithful and he is just to forgive you from your sin. So he started to talk now to Jesus. He started to talk. He said, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And by false accusation, I restore fourfold. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. That is how God called him, was a son of Abraham. Because he confessed to God. He repented of the wrong that he was doing, robbing the people. He confessed because when you come in contact with Jesus, let me tell you something. Things just start to stir up inside of you. You cannot keep it because you want to empty it out. The old things you want to empty it out and tell Jesus, Hear me, I'm ready to make that turn. I'm fed up. I'm sorry. I'm living the life. So repentance 
is necessary. Get here? Repentance is necessary for salvation. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, as he repent, salvation came to his house. Amen? So, Zacchaeus recognized all the wrongdoing he did. Jesus then had was to go and tell him. But I say, where Jesus is, there is conviction. So he was convicted of the wrong things that he was doing. And he said, Lord, whoever I have robbed by false accusation, I restore them for fall. Jesus said in verse 9, This day salvation come to this house for so much as he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? And we all know about the prodigal son. That he went his own way. Amen? And when he reached down to dregs, nothing had to almost eat the pig food. He realized where he went wrong. And he also repented and said, Lord, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. I am going back to my father and say, Father, I have sorry. And it's the same way. When you have sinned and you can say, Lord, I am coming back to you. Jesus is saying, here I am with my arms wide open waiting for you. Just as the father did to welcome his son. Amen. And his son was in a mess. Amen. He could have hardly believed that that was a situation of his son walking down that dusty road. Amen. And he said, yes, I welcome you back into my house. Place him in the rightful position. All that the son did not want it. And sometimes we do not, do not deserve God's goodness and his mercy. But this is why John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The prodigal son was honest. And this is sometimes we lose honesty. Sometimes we are not honest. Amen? But when you are honest, God is ready to take you back. Don't go and play around with God. Amen. Sometimes you have to very pay a very hard, hard price. And sometimes it could also cause death. Amen. So we need to repent. Come back to Jesus and say, I have sinned. And my last point here, Jonah 3, 1 to 10. So we look at people that repented from the wrongdoing. Jonah 3, 1 to 10. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and sac sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from the, his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? 
And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. Amen. So we see here, God told Jonah to go and preach to Nineveh and tell them to repent. Amen. And they went and proclaimed a fast. And the people that had was the fast was man, woman, child, and beast. Everything that has breath had was to go and fast. Amen. And when God saw that, God saved them. And verse 10 said, And God saw their works, and that they turned from the evil way, and God repented of the evil that he has said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. So hear me. If God said he's going to destroy us. And we repent. And do what God said. Hear me. God will also repent on our behalf. Because here he said. And God repented of the evil. That he has said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. So God himself repented on Nineveh's behalf. And what God said he would do, he did not do it. Amen? So, we need to come back to that place where we'll come and repent and say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. So it doesn't matter how far you're going. You can come back once you repented of your sin. So, Kezia, can you show up that little um, writing up there one more time? Amen. So we need to continue to live that holy and righteous life. Amen. Alright. So, I just want to remind you, do not be deceived. No matter what the people say, repentance is still necessary to be saved. Holiness is still required to get into heaven. So these are some things we have to do to get to heaven. We don't just say we go come easy, easy and get to heaven. No. Repentance is necessary. Turn from our sin and come back to God. Amen. So holiness is still a requirement to get to heaven. Amen. So shall we all stand before I hand over to pastor and as we sing this song holiness, holiness is what I long for. This is what God wants us to live holy life. Amen. I know myself, what is this holiness about? You can come and talk to us. We can show you from the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. Just call for a time of repentance. Amen. And there are time after time. We need to do that in the church. Amen. We need to do that in the church. Amen. We hear sometimes we call for repentance for our nation because the kind of things is taking place. We need to stand in the gap for our nation. And even our own home. Sometimes there is so much thing going on in our own home. In our own house, we need to stand in the gap for our own house and go down and repent. Amen? So we see here, when the call for that call of repentance, man, woman, and child, and beast had to go down and suck cloth and ashes and do not eat anything and repent. Amen? So repentance is necessary. Amen? For salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, as you put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At this time, I want to hand right over to the pastor. Praise the Lord. Yes, a very sobering message indeed. As it reminds us how repentance is so necessary. To be saved. Amen. Repentance is so necessary to be saved. And sometimes living a life so many years with habits and ways and things that are contrary to God, you have to really go and cry out to God and say, God, help me. Be honest and say, God, I can't help my. Sometimes a situation that we are accustomed to for so long. And cry out and say, Lord, help me. I really need your help. Help me, Lord. Deliver me and set me free. So that true repentance could take place. Cry out to God and say, God, help me. And you will see how God is able to make it easy for you. Amen. So, what a powerful message indeed. 
This morning we want to go into communion. To sup at the table of the Lord. We have Brother Bob and Hans right to come and assist this morning. And this is the sacrament. This represents the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is something also holy. Amen. That's why we, we say those of you that are baptized and you're making a very special attempt to serve the Lord the right way. This will be a blessing to you. Amen. It will bring healing. It will bring blessings. It will bring great blessing upon your life. But if we realize that we are making joke and fun with God, no. It will bring damnation to you. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23 said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord that till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So there, there is a requirement for self-examination, and as part of that for repentance as well. We realize we have been making a lot of mistakes, doing a lot of things contrary. There is a need for self-examination and deep repentance. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So let us do deep examination of ourselves, deep repentance, and ask God to help us. And God is able to help us in those areas that we are weak. Amen. So at this time we want to pray. We ask um, Bob and then. Hallelujah. Shall we be almighty God and our heavenly Father. Who art in heaven and hallowed be thy name. We do come before your throne of grace this morning Father. That we may make our petition known unto you and find grace in the time of need. Father, we are ever grateful and thankful. We have the privilege and the opportunity to stop at your table and to have fellowship and communion as a body, one with the other, and have fellowship and communion with you, Almighty God. And Father, we are ever grateful and thankful for this emblem that represents the body of Christ. I lift it before you, Father, with thanksgiving, and receive it with thanksgiving, Father. And I bless it and I sanctify it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray this morning, my God, even as we have heard your word, my God, and have bring convictions to our hearts, my God. And whosoever, my God, life is not right before you, my God. But we may repent and we may come, my God, to that place of repentance, my God, that we may, my God, turn from our sin, turn from the ways and our habits that is not pleasing unto you, God, and turn back to you, Almighty God, and turn to your word. Father, we may live a holy and a right life according to thy word. As David said, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, my God. I pray that you will forgive us of every sin, every iniquity this morning. Wash us and cleanse us this morning as we repent and return to you this day, God, as we heard your word, my God. That you will cleanse us from the inside to the outside, my God. Touch our hearts and our minds and cleanse it with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us instruments of holiness and righteousness this morning, God. That we could be worthy partakers this morning, God. And it will bring blessing in our lives, my God. It can help us to grow and to develop and to serve you all the days of our life till we see you face to face, my God. 
Father, we thank you for this privilege and the opportunity we have. And thank you for saving us and delivering us and setting us free from the bondage of sin. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with all thanksgiving. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in unity this morning, O oh dear God. Father, as, as we live this holy gift of communion, O oh dear God, which we can share a bond in our faith, O oh Lord, sweet Jesus. Father, as we focus on the cross of Calvary, O oh dear God, as your blood flowed on that cross, O oh dear God, it washes every sin from our life, O oh dear God. It cleanses our heart, our mind, and our soul, O oh dear God. Father, as we partake this morning in holy communion, O oh dear God, Father, let us remind us, O oh dear God, that perfect exchange, what you have made on that cross for us, O oh dear God. Father, thank you, O oh God, for going on that cross and bearing every pain, every sorrow in our heart, O oh dear God, Father. Father, I lift this element into your hands, O oh dear God. Bless it, O oh dear God, as we partake in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. As you place the sacraments there, you can come and take your portion, go back to your seat, and we'll partake together as one family. In Christ Jesus. Amen.
opportunity to partake together as one family in Christ Jesus. As we remember your death, your burial, and your resurrection. As often as we remember, we partake, we remember your death till you come. And we know that your coming is soon. And help us to be ready and prepared. Thank you for blessing us today. Release blessings upon us of divine health and strength. Mentally, emotionally, physically. And Lord, release your blessings, uh, Lord, of salvation upon us. Lord, my God, that you shed your blood for the remission of our sins. And I thank you for answering every prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. There's a little clip in that Kezia would show. Amen this morning. The glasses would be taken up and discarded. Amen. Repentance demands a change of life. Churches today are half full of fornicators. They're shacked up today like it's no big deal. They stagger in drunk to the services. Hooked on dope and everything under the sun. Well, preacher, we ought to be gracious. We ought to, we ought to be kind to them. We ought to try to, yeah, we ought to try to help them. I agree, but agreeing with their lifestyle is not going to help them. You got to tell them the truth, folks. You got to tell them the truth. Because they don't repent. And until they repent, they're not right with God. We don't preach repentance anymore because repentance demands a change of life. Churches today are half full of fornicators. They're shacked up today like it's no big deal. They stagger in drunk to the services. Hooked on dope and everything under the sun. Well, preacher, we ought to be gracious. We ought to, we ought to be kind to them. We ought to try to, yeah, we ought to try to help them. I agree. But agreeing with their lifestyle is not going to help them. You got to tell them the truth, folks. You got to tell them the truth. Because they don't repent. And until they repent, they're not right with God. Amen. Very loud and clear. You can cut the, um, the live stream at this time. 